everyone. It's Shell C from Paper Rock to You Studio. Today I'm sharing with you some more artist trading cards. This is number 8 and number 11. I know that's kind of weird, but there is a video hop tomorrow here on my channel and the other channels. that um, For the video hop, I did number 9 and number 10. So <laughs> I had to do number 8, which is yesterday's. I already had number 9, and then I ended up doing number 11. This happened during the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show. If you haven't been joining us live, we we uh, do live streams every Thursday morning at 8.30 Pacific Time. Um, that's 10.30 Central, 11.30 Eastern, you know. And we're over there on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel. It's a different channel than this. But yeah, we do it every single Thursday. And you should come on over and watch us and uh, interact with us on the live stream. Link below the video. Um, so for the, the prompts, you know, we've got the surface prompts going on. Surfaces in art is our theme this month in Art Joy of Sharing Art Community. And we've got all these different surfaces to work on. And then we're doing the ATC a day challenge, which we have been doing for every June for I think five years now. And so we're making an ATC each day. We're also working on different surfaces. For number eight, the surface was a magazine page, and I wanted to do what's called an altered magazine page. Basically, you just take a magazine picture or something, you paint over the top of it, make it more interesting. So it's just an easy way to have to not draw. If you just want to do something painterly and fun, but you don't want to draw, you don't want to draw a face, you don't want to draw the hair, you just don't want to do that, you can take an image from a magazine and just glue it down. Um, what I like to use uh, as far as a technique or method is I like to glue magazine paper with uh, the glue stick. And I use Yoohoo glue stick. I think that's the best one. Um, it's, it's not moist. A glue stick is waxy, not moist. So you don't get bubbling and weird stuff that you will get with any other type of glue with a magazine image. That type of paper likes to wrinkle and bubble. So I would recommend using the glue stick. Then what I do is I put clear gesso over the top of it, a thin coat of clear gesso to seal all the inks, to seal everything in there. So nothing's gonna move around because magazine ink is movable with wet. So um, that's what I did is I cut out the image, I glued it down with the glue stick, and then I put clear gesso over the whole card. The card was a gel printed uh, piece of watercolor paper, so it already had like some pattern and color on the back. Put the girl over the top. Now I did not start the camera at the very beginning, sorry. <laughs> so I forgot to start the camera. Um, I have to, uh, we have a live stream camera going which has both of us on it. And because I, I do this with Peg Robinson each Thursday. <clears throat> and then I have a secondary camera, which is my phone. And I have to physically turn it on when we start the show. And I just straight up forgot. So I'd already started to put color on her face. But this is just a girl from a magazine. It's it's a, you know, a blonde girl with white skin from a magazine. And what I wanted was to make it one of those funky portraits that has the fun colors. And so I'm using DecoArt Media Fluid Paint. And I just have a few little dots of it on my paper palette. This palette paper has some waxy coating so it doesn't soak into the paper it's just it's literally a palette um, and then I have a very tiny brush you know artist trading cards are three and a half by two and a half inches they're tiny so that little face that I'm trying to paint is you know an inch <laughs> an inch square maybe <laughs> really small really hard to do so when you when you see the close-ups the extreme close-ups later you see that you can see uh, there's there's painterly strokes from the brush on there and that's that's fine that's my intention but I really can't see well enough to make it perfect so none of these ATCs are ever perfect but they are they look cool from a distance so I used magenta I used purple I used teal I used orange I used yellow Naples yellow um, I used a little bit of black and then the, the white color that I was mixing with everything is Titan Buff 
because I don't have any fluid white right now. I thought I ordered some, but I don't have it. So um, that's fine. I'm using mixing it with the off-white, which kind of tones the color a little bit more subtle anyway. And I am thinking about highlights and shadows. I'm thinking about patches of light on the skin. And when you're using a magazine image like this, you kind of have a roadmap. You can see where the, the shadow is on the side of the face. You can see the shadow under the chin. And then you just need to coordinate the colors that you think are the ones that are the coolest, the coldest. So for me, this is the dioxazine purple and the teal. And then on the highlight areas, maybe you want to use the warmest, which would be the, the magenta, the orange, the yellow. Those type of colors are warm colors. And mix mix a little bit of the, the white in there if you want to. Uh, give yourself some variation. Move it around. Um, mix the colors on the paper as you're going. So I did the whole thing. The, I did the face and the hair in those colors to start with. And then I got out a little bit of black and I just put some really dark um, shadows under the hair. Uh, not really under, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like your hair is dark underneath and light on the top. And then sometimes really light on the top if you have a highlight. But then I did the, sh the shirt. She had the dumbest looking shirt on, I swear. What are these people thinking? <laughs> So I painted over it with black, some black and then I started in with the colors again and made it a little bit more fun and different. Then I used some Prismacolor uh, pigment pins, very tiny t tips of pins to just add a little bit of, of accent uh, in the black around the eyes, um, under the nose, stuff like that. And I put some bright pink archival ink around the edges. And then I got a snarky sticker out from my book of snarky things. And it says, I'm sorry, did I just roll my eyes out loud? That is exactly what I was doing when I was looking at this fashion magazine that I cut this, this image out of. The clothes are hideous and they're not practical and they're just dumb looking. You know, you don't want this rough thing hanging out the top of your, your shoulder and, you know, just bleh. So yes, I did roll my eyes out loud. <laughs> For sure, I'm not into the the crazy wacky stuff that that uh, you do with fashion on the runway or whatever. I just I know it's an art form. I just don't get it. It's not practical. So that's for number eight. Then I switched to number eleven, which is book text. And I had just a, a little scrap for, for actually from the magazine that um, I cut the other one out of. I just used the the text from that. I glued it down again with a glue stick. I like the Yoohoo glue sticks. Those are my favorite. And made sure that it was really good and stuck to this uh, watercolor card stock that's been cut to three and a half by two and a half inches. And now I have this text background. I decided to calm it down a little bit and to uh, seal it like I did with the clear gesso on the other one. Only this time I used a little bit of watered down white gesso. So it it kind of makes that text seem more of like a background and not like, oh, we need to read this because I don't want to read it. I don't even know what it says. That's not the point. <laughs> the point is that we're going to use um, text as a graphic element in our art project. So it's not about what it says. So then I grabbed a few um, gel printed papers that are translucent. So I'm looking for tissue paper, I'm looking for rice paper, looking for deli paper, things like that. And um, I wasn't really, I was like trying to think what color scheme do I want and I decided to go bright again. You know, I really, I tend to like the bright colors the best. I will do other colors, but I like the bright ones the best. And I have these ink pads, they are mini archival ink pads. And I grabbed some rubber stamps that are letters and I'm going to continue using letters as my design. So I'm not spelling anything. S L um, no, I'm not spelling anything. <laughs> I don't, I'm just using letters literally as, as shapes. They have no meaning. 
they're just shapes. And then I just, uh, I, I stamp them in different colors on different pieces. I've got a large, a stamp set that has the larger letters and a stamp set that has smaller letters. I also have a piece of tissue paper that's got some stuff printed on it. It's like collage tissue paper that you buy. I think it, I'm not sure who, who, who makes that product, but um, it's fun to use in your collage layers to layer it over and under because it's black and white neutral. And if you're using these translucent or transparent papers, you get a lot of different layers. This is what I'm doing. I'm working with paper that you can see through a little bit. It's not completely see-through, but when I layer, say that yellow bit on top of the green and teal bit, it changes the color, it changes the shape, and I'm just layering them over each other. And I'm not making all the letters go, I mean, our, our brain says the letter needs to go upright so that you can read it, right? It's not upside down, it's not sideways because you can't read it that way. Or you can, but it's harder. So I'm intentionally fighting my brain to make sure that I put them on their side, to put them upside down, um, so that they're not all like little soldiers standing up, ready to go. <laughs> and I just keep layering different ones. I've got some of the small, some of the large, some of the tissue paper, and I just glued that all down with the glue stick. I didn't even try to get anything else out. And then I decided that the colors I was going with was um, bright green, bright pink, purple, and teal. Those are probably colors that I like the best. And so that's just what I gravitated naturally to. And I am take, going back in with the um, stamps again, using those ink pads. And then as, as I'm going with each color, I'm, I'm uh, coloring the edge of the card. With the different colors so it's all just made up of graphics the whole thing from top to bottom is just graphic letters and numbers because there is like a 192 there I guess in the middle I was just using all letters but I guess I used that piece from the tissue which was 192 so it's got numbers on it too so I'm adding all the different colors all around trying to go for balance in my composition making sure the colors are equally spread around the, the whole card. And then I decide I need a focal or an emphasis. I have this printed sheet of circles. Not really sure where I got it, but somebody made that. And it was um, something that you get like maybe in a class that's handed out to you. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> I just have it. Might be from Wanderlust, maybe, I'm not sure. But anyway, I picked one of the circles, punched it out with my circle punch, and that's gonna be my area of focus. Not, not smack dab in the center, way off to the side, hanging off the edge, not, not in the middle going up and down either. We're doing this, you know, thirds thing that I like to do. And then I went around the outside edge of it with some black pencil, blended that out with my water brush, to give some emphasis to it. And then I thought, you know, it would be fun. I think I'm gonna do some dripping. Yeah, I like dripping. <laughs> so I grabbed some yellow, some transparent yellow, uh, golden high flow paint. That's the very liquidy paint from Golden. And let it drip down the card a couple different ways tapped it so that it would drip, sponged it back a little bit with my wet wipe and dried it down. Then I also added some, um, I think it's called light red or something, but it's magenta. It's that, that pink, intense pink color. And that time I spritzed it a little bit with water, tapped it down, let it uh, drip and then dried it. And you can still see everything through those. They're transparent colors, intense, intentionally transparent. So that's cool. Um, I added a little bit of more mark making with my pencil. And then the last thing I did was to add a sticker and some glitter glue. Yeah, glitter glue, you know, stickles, glitter glue. I like that. So I hope you guys have been enjoying this challenge. 
all month. I hope you're participating with us. We're only on day nine, so there's still a couple weeks left of ATC a day, Artist Trading Card a Day. Uh, join, join with us. If you haven't joined the art community on Facebook yet, you can look at the link below the video. Make sure you answer the questions that pop up when you um, click on that link. And, uh, of course, give me a thumbs up, comment on my video, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, uh, turn on your notif notification bell so that you know when there's a new video, which is usually every other day to every third day. And, of course, you can join my channel membership for $1.99 a month, get exclusive content every 15th of the month, which is coming up pretty soon. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.